the recording and I uploaded recording it. Recording is on. And I uploaded it unlisted so that it's available right. but not broadly visible. So, um, so I pointed, this is what I actually do to um, be able to go to spaces more often. I just created a Go link for the chat. So essentially, if you say in the hour, go fellowship the link chat or go chat fellowship link or go, that, that, that kind of thing, it will always redirect to the right channel. So essentially, it's like a, it's, have you, are you familiar with Go links? Uh, I've heard of them, but I don't use them. Yeah, it's essentially like a shortening, but where the, the um, is like service where the user chooses the the key and right. they can compound in the Agora. So you can essentially end up with like uh, sort of like an ad hoc uh, uh, taxonomy or like a folksonomy or something. I guess you can call it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, I'm a huge fan. So I I, usually, I I have goaling for everything. And then if you think, well, I want to go there, you just say go there in the Agora, and it is certainly likely will work eventually. Hmm. So you don't need to remember. It's like essentially like, um, I guess, a delicious, a sort of delicious like. Sort sense. of, but it sounds like it's a private delicious kind of it. Is GoLinks meant to be shared links too? Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The, the nice thing about the um, uh, GoLinks, my, my experience, is that communities creating and maintaining the GoLinks. Oh, that's good. They are like, they are like, they just like, you know, you see the, it's essentially like an MVP for the knowledge graph. It's, like uh -huh. an, it's one of the entrances into it. Interesting. So it's bookmark, yeah. it is bookmark sharing. That's great. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And cool. and you do this only by typing notes. Essentially, in your note, if you have a URL, you say hashtag go next to the link, and the Agora will process that as the source of truth for the Go link. Huh. Essentially. Do you, yeah, have, anyway. do you have like an, a specific example of what that looks like? Uh, I think yes. That's what I'm missing. Do you want a screen share? It's, oh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, let me just do, do a, a show. I mean, I get the general concept, I think, but I'm yeah, I have a new computer here, yeah, yeah. And this is the kind of thing where, um, are you seeing the right thing? Yeah, oh, wait, wait. No, I'm, I'm seeing seeing an agenda with a slot, some slides. Yes, are you recording this? Yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> did you not want that in? <laughs> Perhaps not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, no, uh, no, it's fine, it's fine. No, I, that's actually my project. It's like, and I talk about it. Okay, good. And nobody knows what it is, so. Exactly. Well, yeah, I will, I will, I will meet you. Know, like, as long as you don't have any live, you know, clear text password. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. No, no. Uh, sorry, because I, of course, while traveling, I have one laptop only. So there you go. Hmm. Um, okay, so I'm presenting now. Uh, window. Yeah, pick the right desktop this time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will try. Yeah, here we go. Cool. So essentially, uh, imagine you are... So you want to, oh, okay, let's see if this is updated. Right. So here you are like FOTL. So FOTL is how I call this group uh, yep. for sure. Yep. Yep. And it, uh, this, I, oh, that's actually a good example of two things. Okay, nice. Good. So first, like FOTL, I actually call it fill on the link mostly. But um, I wanted to use FOTL as well because it's shorter. Mm -hmm. uh, so here I say hashtag pool fill the link. And what it will do is that the Agora will essentially um, transclude Felicia the link in FOTL. And it's just recursive. It actually just puts another Agora inside the Agora. Mm -hmm. And it kept doing that, you know, <laughs> of course. I love, I love uh, recursivity. It's like, uh, I find it funny. So anyway, and here, uh, of course, you have, oh, this is completely unrelated, but it's like uh, uh, Wikipedia, if you search for fellowship, it talks about the TL fellowship, which although it's, it's unrelated to Felicia the link, I find interesting because it could be the fellowship of the ring, you will, you will think. Hmm. So here is like potentially something to fix in Wikipedia or not. And anyway, uh, before we go into any of these, um, so go links. So here, because I have hashtag go and it, it, uh, the document yeah, and a document link, if in the Agora I say go if, uh, uh, photo, which is the same as saying an Agora door go photo, or because I use uh, Agora search, well, in this case, no, because I'm on a Google computer, but usually it will, it will also work. It just right. reacts to the document. So essentially, uh, it's very easy to um, finish the links. It says it's uh, here, but I can fix it. Um, and if um, if I say, because he's, it says chat, if I do go photo chat, it will actually react to matter most, unless this is broken, let's see. But sorry, is, is this is this a feature within Anagra or? Yeah. Okay, but this so this is not a generally 
this is not general use of GoLinks. So GoLinks are in general the idea of a shared database of links which are associated with, with short links which are user uh, of the user's choice. Right. So, so it, is this your implementation of that idea within yes. Anagra? OK, exactly. So, this, so you're not making any calls to GoLinks right now. You are completely outside of GoLinks. This is completely, this is all running in the Agora server implementation. OK, OK. Uh, GoLinks uh, were born in uh, at Google around 2000, well, in the, in the early nodes. Uh -huh. And they were implemented several times, open source and otherwise. And they are actually quite big in particular companies, in particular in Silicon Valley. Uh, I think of a few, I think Uber uses them and a few more. And what I, what the, I guess the interesting thing of them is when a community, which is like, you know, working on, on, on um, compatible projects or like, uh, you know, occasional conversion projects, right. maintains a database of goal links, there is uh, an emerging effect. So, they get, you can first, you can guess a goal link. If you have a project and it's called like, uh, you know, <laughs> fellowship of the link, and we work on such an environment, it's like we essentially can sort of know that go fellowship of the link will go somewhere interesting. Cool. And the second thing is that you can, de you can develop a taxonomy in the sense that, you know, for example, that you can do go agora um, and say like, okay, I wonder where you go. Okay, so this should point I'm sorry, this is a bit slow because of, um, of caching issues, but like, okay, so I guess this doesn't work because I have to confirm. Mm -hmm. It redirects to Agora repository. Right. And use, but if you say, uh, of course, I can do this. If you say go Agora server, it redirect to the, you know, this repository, which is like ancillary in the sense. This is what and, it could, and it could go to any arbitrary URL. You're just, yes. naming, you're just naming them in some way. If you know. contribute to the Agora and yeah. you tag Go links with Go or with whatever keyword, uh, then you are, the Agora will, uh, af within 30 seconds after updating your staff, it will start serving them. Gotcha. So here's a question then yes. for how this works. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a, a hashtag go with a link after it yes. on your page, and then I add yes. a similarly named page to the Agora exactly. that is aggregated on that page. Yeah. Is it Agora? How does it created? determine which of the two links to go to? Or exactly. can there only be one for? Yeah, yes. Thank you. This is the this is the key question, and the answer is, you tell me because the Agora decides that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the Agora runs open algorithms, and the idea is for uh, users to actually define the algorithms. Um, of course, I can call them, but you can also give ranking hints. This is like a, not cool. implemented actually. The idea is like the default will be. Uh, rank by um, so users have a rank in the Agora, yeah. Uh, 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 before nodes and within nodes, you can say, for example, like about this user in this node. Uh, but otherwise, it's sort of like a uh, the default will be like a trust-based system where you know if I uh, up rank Neil's nodes um, and Neil up ranks your nodes. And you have a goal link, another person has a goal link, and I use I, I query the Agora, the user will probably get the um, uh, the goal link by your closest friend. But it, when it when when there's more than one, it should probably flash all of them. You know, like the idea is to have like a redirect page which doesn't ex doesn't exist where it says like, you know, welcome to the Agora redirecting to X in two seconds, click here to override. Yeah. And of course the override is a ranking signal. Okay, so it's yeah. left up to the server to decide what exactly. the implementation is. Exactly, yes. Okay. Exactly. That makes sense. But generally, in a broader community, there will be some kind of consensus as to where that thing would probably go. Right, exactly. In, in general, like uh, the idea is to, uh, I'm, I'm a lazy, so the idea is to solve things the fewest times we can do, we can make it with. And that will be, you know, the, the ranking for a goaling by default will be the ranking of the sub node in a node. And if you want to uh, say, no, this goal link is better, then you should probably update the node, the, the sub node in the node. And say, for example, like, we, we don't have a lot of conflicts. Um, yes. Oh, this is another thing, which is the, the, the chat integration. If you have, um, if you use the chat integration in, in the, uh, with the Agora, you add a bot. And then every time you use a, a wiki link, uh, it will link to it. 
So then I, you know, I, I, I can actually click here and, and jump to the conversation in this point. And it will also, of course, dump the message in this case. Yeah. Yeah, this kind of thing. Anyway, uh, so I guess uh, this is stuff. Oh, wow. OK. And this is a. Uh, uh, this is like the closest I have to something graphic, uh, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, and this is this is the regular mapping from. This is something you've built. Sorry, yeah. go yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. This is like uh, the local error graph. So this is the node I mean. This mm -hmm. all all built on Force Graph, which is just like this standard uh, JavaScript uh, library for um, for graphing. And here you say like you know you have both forward links, so link, links from here, link uh, pages linking here. And like these are like pages pushing here, so the pages that are have content which are transcluding remotely. Uh, yes, and every page has one of these. Uh, yes, um, it's interesting because some pages have more forward links and some have more back links, and they tend to be of different kinds. Like that actually says something about the page. Yeah, you know, I guess yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think this is like uh, the. <laughs> Uh, this is the demo. Um, and of course, like the, the nice thing is you can compose with go links and so on. So it's like, for example, when I when I check when I want to check if there are bugs in in Agora in Agora server, I can really uh, I can just do Agora server bugs. And essentially, you have like an emergent like multi-level sort of like it feels a bit like a command line, which I like. So then I don't have to click around. What you only link once, and then you can jump to a, to a context. And the algorithm is all about trying to jump into mental context. So mm -hmm. yeah. So you wind up negotiating a namespace with the community. Yes, and then the idea is to have like the local algorithm. The local algorithm is a, uh, right now a closely knit community, so we can postpone uh, solving a lot of pro hard problems. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. um, and but we. And, and, and this is something that happened only a few months ago. You know, like we also have an active uh, um, chat channel now. So um, I was like, okay, great. Now we have a community. The community can decide how we rank. The community can decide how we, you know, administer the commons. Because it was weird to like write all this code before there was a community, because the code is for the community. So um, I was sort of waiting on that. And until then, it's just like uh, we are anarchists, right? So it's like whatever. If you if you create a goal link. Uh, it may be that you actually take it over. I actually have to check what happens. Like, I think the first one uh, works. It's like I haven't done any ranking. Yeah, but it, it works anyway. So, cool. sorry, we went to a tangent. Yeah, it's OK. Um, what um, what topic would we like to focus on together? Yes. The three of us here. What's so we have the time? timing. Timing thing, for sure. Yes, yeah. But uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we have to figure out when to when to move our call to sort of semi permanently. That would be great. Yes, yes. Uh, I was going to propose, I think, eleven a.m. on Fridays. Yes, eleven a.m. Pacific, but that's late in Zurich. So. I'm fine with that on Fridays. It, it will give me something. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. It's bad in Europe. It's not bad on the East Coast because it's just Friday afternoon. Right, right. On Friday, eleven a.m. Chris, that, is that a reasonable hour for you? So it's you know, it's all morning times for me, so that's fine. It's you know, it's part of the work day, but Fridays are yeah. usually quieter, so it's yeah, not bad. yeah, yeah. That, that would work for me, and we can float that with everybody else and see on the uh, on the Mattermost and see what. And what about the eleven a.m.? So I have to like ask, what about eleven a.m. on Thursdays? Because um, Fridays, I you know, now I'm single. So perhaps I will go out more. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was gonna say you gotta watch out for Eduardo's date night, <laughs> like yeah. social life. We can't kill that. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. No, I mean this is amazing, and I will take. I mean, uh, you know, I, I love this. So, but if it conflicts, I am very, you know, yeah. I, perhaps it's better if it doesn't conflict. <laughs> so we've been we've been at ten a.m. on Thursdays, um, which doesn't work for Dan. Eleven a.m. on Thursdays works for me just fine. So oh. If you just shift an hour later on the same day, that'll work for me. Cool. So what do you think, Chris? Uh, either of those is fine with me. OK. So perhaps I, I'll, if, if you're OK with, if you're equally OK with those, then perhaps I will move to 11 a.m. Pacific and then just ask uh, people to RSVP for the next one. Yep. Cool. Um, 
once you figure out what that time is too, I, and I'm pretty sure I haven't logged into it, but Dan gave a bunch of, a, or um, Jerry gave a bunch of us um, access to that website. So putting up something there with, I think there's enough of a mission statement for what it is, but being able to have a thing to say, here's where you can find us. And these are the details and some resources to come join in. Cause there's a list of four or five people. I think that I can, who are all thinking the same types of things we're thinking. Yes. Yeah. But it becomes a quick little, if nothing else, a business card page to say, here's what we're doing. Here's when we're meeting, here's the resources. So you can easily join in. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then we can go from there. Uh, um, and and more speed. let's, let's, so there's different kinds of degrees or places to be public. I'd love to be public on the Mattermost server a lot because then what we'll do is we'll attract OGM and related project people in here yeah. as opposed yeah. to random bypass, random passersby on the web. Uh, and then I'd love for us to sort of shake the tree for people we know we'd like to include in the conversation. Um, but we should use the website for as much as much. We, we can also uh, easily post up the videos that we're doing, et cetera, et cetera, like, like mm -hmm. our calls and all that and our do shared documents can all be posted openly to the website as well. That's easy to do. Um, uh, that sounds nice. Yes, yes, I think bold. Cool. Not the most. What's a high leverage topic for the three of us? Mm, nice. Yeah. Um, I think, um, let's see. I have one in mind, but Chris, it looked like you were about to say something. No, I'm thinking heavy thoughts in terms of what nice. what are what's the Pareto principle like? What what yes. can we focus on the you know the twenty percent that'll make the most difference? It, right. I was thinking precisely. I was thinking of that. Or like yeah, that direction. Yes. <laughs> what's what's the what's the twenty percent effort that'll re lead to the eighty percent result or back? Yeah, yeah, like yes. I don't know. exactly. Yes. Um. I have a, I have an, an idea. Good. Like a, just a, as a conversational topic, perhaps to go in that direction or to try to define what that is, which is like thinking of the future together and like saying, like, say, 2025, what could we achieve by 2025, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, or what would we like to see achieved? Uh, I mean, depending, you know, like to be like even freer. Something like this, I sometimes I, it helps me, I guess, align on the on the longer scale or like greater scale with people. So that would be one way I would we, we'll look for for that. And you know, like essentially, that, that, I'll stop talking. Um, along those lines, uh, I've been trying to create a vision video or mm. artifact about the relate project that I've got and how it fits with other sorts of projects and all that. Um, about building a shared memory and so forth. And I think in my head, I've got only a, a few limited kind of paths to tell the story. And, and I'm not sure they're the best paths to tell the story, which leads me to the other thought that I was going to throw in the conversation here, which is I kind of realized yesterday that instead of sitting here wrestling with these questions all by myself and feeling like I've bitten off more than I can chew, I should do what I'm good at, which is have office hours online and basically create a sequence of calls and invite people in with focused conversations and say, okay, here's a document that roughly describes mm -hmm. where we are in the process and what we think we're kind of aiming toward. Today, we're gonna like focus on this thing and try to melt it. And then every time we solve something or improve something, it'll, that document will be available and will be like another brick in the wall. Yeah. Terrible analogy, but, um, mm -hmm. but, but trying, to, trying to sort of build the structure up that way. And that feels like a very fellowship of a linky kind of thing to do. And mm -hmm. part of what I was trying to do, and I was going to go consult Pete Kaminsky, who is my standing sort of get, get city and consultant person friend. Um, but I wanted to figure out uh, how to build a series of markdown files that contain nuggets of these ideas in a, in a nice linky way so that I can link to them from my brain, but they're also interlinked in a wiki kind of way okay. online. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, that and then amazing. we and then we get wiki links. Yes, and then That's not, we can. Do you want an hour? Do you, should I set up an hour for you? So what are the so what are the native file formats under the Agora? It's like a mark uh, markdown org mode, and PNG JPEG, and I guess 
well, I have an TXT, but TXT is there sort of like by the yeah. yeah. So yeah. so I'm so yes. What I want to do is is as soon as possible have a working collaboration with people using different tools through something like files on you know on in GitHub and Markdown. Yes. Uh, with some other goodies, and if that means that you're coming in with with uh, with an Agora. And I'm coming in with the brain and the obsidian, yes. and someone else is coming in with mem, and someone else is coming in with rome, and yeah. we can and we can improve files together. Exactly. As I'm having that conversation, that is a huge yes. win right up front. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. So essentially, if you have a bunch of Git repositories, or in the future, like Drive or Dropbox, and etc. But to start with Git repositories. Yep. And you you can essentially make a collection out of them, and they can be maintained by a single person or by a group, and that's a detail of the Git repository. So it's like, then the Agora will try to render it for you, essentially. Nice. OK, that makes sense. And then and then I think I mentioned this before, but I may not have because I'm forgetting where I said what. But Jolt Vician in Hungary has taken Obsidian with a plugin Excalibur, and he has done a closer emulation of what the brain does to anything I've ever seen anybody do. So uh, I've got, nice. so I've got uh, Excalibur running on my iPad so I can draw uh, because Excalibur, Excalibur is a pretty nice drawing app. When yeah. you use the web version, it's collaborative drawing. So you can invite other people to a live drawing session, which is it's cool. very cool, honestly. Is I cool also. The time. Yeah. And, and, and so what I'm hoping to do, um, actually, let me screen share for a second because I've yeah. got a... Awesome. Which app am I in? Yeah. I screen what is the there? Token there we go. The project? Uh, so hold on. Let me go to. Uh, hold on. Let me let me unscreen share for a second. And now I'm. Am I screen sharing? I'm not. I thought I was. So you're not seeing my screen at all. Nope. That's right. All right. So let me try that again. But let me first go to my uh, drawings. Why is my? Oh, that's weird. I think I need to reboot. Oh, there we go. I was just not looking at it. Okay, good. So let me find. <clears throat> good. Got what I wanted. Now let me come back and screen share. Boop. 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 Entire screen, share. Is that working? No. Oh, it's not working at all. Yeah, Sorry, really interesting. It worked interesting. earlier. Yeah. So uh, let me see if it works for let, me. Let, I don't want to share a window. Yeah, it works now. Screen. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing yours. Weird. So um, are you in a new browser? No. Hmm. OK, so maybe it's not going to work. Anyway, let me just talk it through. Yes, or if you share a link, uh, perhaps you can see. Uh, yeah, except the document I have is a JPEG on my on my drive right here for for the moment. Uh, um, so well, we share, but yeah, it, drive sharing is not that uh, comfortable. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it's too complicated for my brain to hold right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a couple things. Uh, a while ago, I was trying to describe Open Global Mind and its related networks, and we had this yes. idea of what is the view from the top of your mast, and we we had this idea that there were a bunch of little organizations in a flotilla kind of floating out together in the same general direction, but yeah, each yeah. of which was its own little entity, right? Federation. So, uh, federation? Yeah. It's yes. sort of a federation, yeah. Um, so I had this idea. I, I'm borrowing the multiplane camera. Uh, do, you know, do you guys know what a multiplane camera is? Yeah. Uh, I don't Duncan? know. No. Okay, Sorry, so, I don't know. So Disney invented to make cartoons look a little better. Yes. OK, um, cellulose. They basically created a multiplane camera where you put the sun back here, the hills back here, the yes. people here, et cetera. You have one of those? No, I don't. I don't have one. But just no, okay. yes. metaphorically, metaphorically, <laughs> yeah, metaphorically, I'm drawing a multiplane image where these images are related to each other. So one of them is what organizations do I see from the top of my mast? And that would be like me and the you know OGM in the middle, or now rel eight uh, right on uh, sort of next to it. But then over here is the Meta Project, and over here is the Trove, uh, Vincent's Trove, and over here is Fellowship of the Link, and over here is okay. uh, great. Then if you bump up a level in the multiplane, there are individuals. And individuals can belong to multiple projects or multiple organizations. That's awesome. And then if you bump down, you can get to kind of a project layer, which is like, oh, these orgs are doing these kinds of projects, which are sometimes serving multiple organizations' goals. That's awesome. 
And then any organization can also have a vision of their future, which is a conceptual diagram of where they think they're heading. So one of my layers was a conceptual diagram just for OGM with the idea that every organization would then create its own tapestry or mosaic or vision of the future. Yes. Map. And then a map of the future. And then as we dissolve those maps, and mosaic is a good word here because I was using the language of a software project being a tile in the mosaic. Right. It can and be a if, puzzle as well. And, and, if, and if project A described a tile that was really useful for project D, that's a triple word score tile, and we should figure out a way to fund that tile yes. and to write it in a more generalized way yes. so that it's useful for both projects and everybody else in the world as an open source piece of code. Yeah, completely. Right? And so, and so painting the mosaic, which yeah. is the vision, and then several different organizations might say, oh, I, we really like that mosaic. We're going to jump on board that same mosaic, even though we're chewing off a different piece of it ourselves. But that's going to that feel like exactly. a good vision of our, our world also. Completely, and there, completely. Could, and there could also be competing mosaics, which are like similar goals, but different instantiations, different implementations. That would be fine too, right? And, and so this multiplane view it's meant to be, and it's like really hard to find a tool where you can, because because I want to be able to go from 2D visualization of a layer, which is just a 2D graphics package like Excaladraw, done deal, yeah. love yeah. it. Uh, there's yeah. also diagrams.net, which is quite handy and open source and free. So that's kind of cool, but I pre I'm now preferring Excaladraw. Um, but then how do, I, how do I drop these into the multiplane view so that I can see the relationships across layers? And then how do I instrument, again, wrong word, how do I um, uh, make a layer uh, the output of code so that if somebody yeah. has a database of organizations and their relationships to each other that spit out a map like you just showed us from, yeah. from uh, the Anagra, right. then that could be a layer in here, yeah, right? Exactly. Yes. And, so and, so, and that's so the that automates that automates the creation of some of these layers. Then you can start sort of navigating around and saying, okay, good. This project can, this task belongs to this project, belongs to these three organizations. Yeah. These are the five people working on them. And then we're off to the races. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, the way, the, 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 I think the simplest way to do that, if we do it with open source, will be, you know, one, you can render uh, this, uh, a plane. So, for example, like, uh, and that will be a diagram, right? It could be a diagram of some organization or whatever thing. Uh, to relate different planes, essentially you can imagine like having a diagram here and then I'm here and uh, some text here, for example, and a recording. These are all like essentially artifacts. And, you know, they, they can be at different levels and you know, a diagram can be about a document, right? Or be in mm -hmm. a document. So in general, that, that relationship can be modeled, uh, 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 you know, of, of course it's a graph. And um, the, the simplest thing I think will be to if you have a site that can render the uh, each plane, for example, the diagram can render the text, or like the markdown can render the uh, uh, you know the, the video recording. Mm -hmm. You just embed them. So essentially, uh, right. what the Agora does is the Agora does is try to just embed. You you get an iframe like Wikipedia, you know, which we saw. Mm -hmm. So as long as all the properties, all the um, properties, all the commons, uh, all the parts of the common, uh, I should say, are um, uh, are finally being embedded, and the tools that are in the commons tend to be whereas the tools which are copyright tend not to be, yep. then the integration cost is very, very small. And of course, it's shallow integration in the sense that you embed something, you embed Wikipedia, a priori, it's not like you can interact between the uh, 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 frame embedding and the other, but you can if there's a further, further cooperation. So it's a, a good model for cooperation. And the fact that to embed, you need a link. We are the feature for the link. Exactly. If we do it, uh, at the very least, we have a graph this, this multiplane is like links in an order, in a stack. Yes. And once you have that, of course you can do deeper integration, but that core model of a stack or like a graph of links, is it, it does 80% of the lifting. Yes. And that's the 2080. Uh, it is actually, it's like, I think a 2080 approach for- uh, A what approach? Lift. A 20? A 2080. The Apareto, yeah. yeah. Sorry, 8020 is, is usually the. Oh, the, interesting. The, I say to, I started with 10 because that's the effort I have to make. And I I'm know. lazy. That's funny. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. Uh, 2080, what? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Chris, uh, does this make sense to you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would frame it more in a a standards based yes. framing yeah. so that you can 
have the smallest pieces loosely joined so that anybody can pick up. I want to play with these three building blocks. But when I pick those blocks up, I know exactly what they'll do. Yeah. Whether it's a text block or a markdown block or maybe an HTML yeah. block. And, and with those, we can do other things. And each client can then come to, you know, you define as little as you possibly can as a standard or small sets of standards or progressive standards so that each client can then pick up as many blocks as they possibly can. Um, so that regardless of how you come at it, you know, a tool like Excalibur ideally should be usable by 20 of these note-taking apps. But the tough part is if yeah. you're doing it, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of these small little apps are trying to take, they may only be building for something, let's say like, uh, you know, Obsidian. Right. And what Obsidian's base is maybe dramatically different than what Rome Research's base is in terms of what you can interact with. Right. So as a developer, you're then constrained to only be able to build for one or the other. Yes. Or you've got to do four times more work as that or person to be able to make it work for both. But then once you go into 10 different companies, how do you have the time, effort, and engineering expertise. Yes. You know, it's, it's a problem right now with, you know, Apple, iPhones, and, you know, Android. Yeah. It's okay. Two systems are so dramatically different yeah. that I can't very easily, you know, so I have to choose which one am I going to spend my time doing? And it's better if the companies at the top are competing on something besides, you know, siloing all your data. Well, one of, the, one, of the interesting things, one of the interesting things about browsery apps is that because the browsers then run everywhere, you get away from the uniquenesses of the platforms. And that's, a, that's at least a, an interesting workaround. Um, mm -hmm. One of the mm -hmm. dilemmas or dangers of the scenario you just painted, Chris, is you wind up with a least common denominator functionality because you have to sort of find what's, what's, what's the subset that, that, is, uh, that functions everywhere. Um, yes. But I'm trying to figure out one of the cool things that Tim Berners-Lee did that made the World Wide Web work was he looked over at SGML and said, that's way too fucking complicated. Let's simplify it. But instead of let's simplify it, he also said, let's make it graceful so that it breaks gracefully so that uh, with SGML, you submit a document for compiling with an SGML compiler, which then says, oops, you have mistakes. Uh, and uh -huh. one, one mistake in an SGML file and yeah. it didn't compile. No, that's, an unfor that's an unforgiving model. Yeah, right. With HTML, if any of the little piece parts that I just got requested to be sent to your browser doesn't show up, you get a little broken image icon and the browser yeah. goes on and says, the browser shrugs and says, hey, this thing didn't render, good luck fixing it or whatever. Okay. That hack, that hack, I'm trying to out, that kind of graceful degradation is, is something I'd love to figure out for the architectures that we're talking about. So yes. how do we get... How do we get maximum replication of capacity and power? How do we get progressive disclosure of, hey, if you tried looking at this data with this other tool, it would do much more stuff. You, 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 it right. would sing and dance, not just like hop around on screen mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and on from there. And then we talked last time about ActivityPub and the Fediverse and stuff like that. And I think there's some tools in there that we might be able to use. I don't know. I don't really understand. I couldn't explain ActivityPub to anybody. The, there are the I think the bigger issue with activity pub as it stands now is it's uh, like some of those earlier things it's much more complicated than it ever needs to be oh okay and so instead of starting with I and and I can even frame it maybe from an an indie web perspective which takes a plurality first whatever we're building you should be able to write it in whatever language you want and it shouldn't be specific to a language, but it should work everywhere as much as possible. Right. When they designed and built ActivityPub, they over-designed it and over-specified it and made it incredibly hard. So there's, you know, there's maybe 10 or 20 people in the world who are actively writing and doing something with it. And in, in large part, mm -hmm. they're doing well because they've been doing it for a long time and they know what all the, the foibles yeah. and problems are. 
Whereas I, if, yeah. if you want to come at it, so I've I've got a friend, um, Aaron Parecki, who's a I know him. Yeah. A security expert. Yeah. He has his own website and he bootstrapped onto the back of it the ability to interact as if it were an activity pub setup. Yep. But the amount of work and effort that it took him to do that was just insanely silly. Damn. Okay. That's um, great to know. And it so it's it's there and it's lovely, but there's a reason why right now Mastodon is running the entire show because even though there's a spec called Activity Pub, if you don't if you don't interoperate with how Mastodon views that world, mm -hmm. you don't exist really. Mm -hmm. um, That's really interesting. So everybody is kind of bending towards Mastodon's flavor of Activity Pub and yeah. how it's implemented. Because if you don't work with that, you may as well not exist, or you're hmm. a you know second or third tier player. Hmm. Go ahead, Fonzie. Yeah, no, no this is uh, uh, super interesting. I, I, I guess two two things I wanted to point out here, perhaps, as possibilities. One, um, I guess this is the, the question. Uh, the, uh, I'll do that second. The first one is like we must have been the de facto standard. There's also Pleroma. There's other like ones which are like relative, have relatively high compatibility, as understand it. But um, you know, like uh, fresh code, uh, like different code bases, and apparently more manageable. Regardless of that, there's several. So my default architecture here will be to actually use one of those instead of having to reimplement the standard. Actually, run an instance, which is what we do for Sharkop, and it's, it doesn't take that long, or, or it's not that complex, and then bridge. So I'm, I'm lazy, like I said. So it's like you know, if we, there is an implementation for any standard. And we can run it and then bridge to it. That's my sysadmin sort of solution. I won't call it. I won't implement. Um, and there is some risk to it because, of, of course, you get tied to that particular implementation. But you get like very uh, high compatibility. You can run an experiment very quickly. So that will be my um, uh, my default uh, proposal. You know, if we can con if we can produce a feed, uh, then we can post it to to Mastodon, for example, very easily, very easily, like uh, you know. And of course, we can consume from Mastodon very easily. So essentially, we have a converter. And at, at that point, it's like perhaps uh, the complexity of activity pub can be seen as a historical detail, right? And, and we can just uh, essentially design on top of it. Mm -hmm. The second thing is feeds in general. It seems like, you know, I keep thinking of strings, just strings. So, and of course, like activity pub is a format for like inter exchanging uh, interrupting streams. Uh, in particular, you know, with a particular schema and a, a particular, like, um, uh, you know, uh, like the social aspect and so on, limits. But, uh, right, but essentially, uh, they are just streams, and I, I, I get back to feeds. Like, a feed seems like a simple stream before you add all the social. Uh, so uh, don't, you know. don't feeds break transcludability? So in and, which way? Interesting. Well, I'm, and here I'm not sure about my terminology, but one of the, one of the cool things that uh, Jolt showed me in his brain hack was that he could change text in a drawing in Excaladraw and it would change the link, the backlink word in his markdown file in Obsidian. Yes. And I was like, and I was like, holy crap, that's great. That's exactly what you want. You want you want the the, the, the objects as they're renamed and repurposed and, yeah. and edited to be connected back and forth. And that's not a stream. Because an activity stream basically loses the ability to go backward upstream. You, you can't swim upstream in stream protocols, at least oh. not that I know of. But, right. trans, but transclusion means there's a connection between these things, and they will then be updated together. And, well, and, and I, I mean, to, yeah. to, to complexify that, mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, uh, GitHub's uh, fork and pull protocol, which is a different way of creating a longer connection over time. Mm -hmm. It says, I'm going to go break off and fork my own version of it and play with it, play with it, play with it. But then I'm going to make an improvement and suggest that back to the mainstream. And yeah. that's how we incorporate change back upstream, right? right. Yes. And, and that's interesting. And I don't understand technically or mm -hmm. practically for a community of people trying to think together, which of these things fits where. And, I, right. I'm, and, and to me, that's one of the puzzles to solve in the process of developing this platform we'd yeah. like to use yeah. together. So my understanding from this, and I, 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 I'm not sure, I would like to discuss this uh, more because to understand more the problem uh, that you, you saw with, um, as it was linked or not, perhaps to the implementation or you know, this is Calidro um, 
um, um, um, like MVP and, uh, and, and service in general. But I will say that that sounds related to the aversioning problem. So if I understand correctly, as in uh, what are you exactly transcluding Needs, uh, requires you to define identity to some extent. So you need to define the resource you're transcluding. Is it the feed? Is it like a particular post with item within the feed? Or is it potentially something like the newest item which identifies with an entity in the feed? Mm -hmm. And I think the latter is probably what we want. Well, which yes, with, essentially with, uh, uh, allows for updates. Right. And uh, well, also, if you have just a, um, if you treat every nugget as a page with versions, with version control, your default setting can be the most recent version of everything you reach for. Exactly. Yes. But then you okay. can make it really, yes. e really easy to scroll back through time. Yes, exactly. So this is essentially what uh, we are, uh, I think, we're trying to do for the hour, essentially. So yeah. the, uh, repository. So essentially, the stream uh, is, of course, like a timeline. And then you can, essentially, it's like we are pr projecting and saying, like, okay, this means. And the versioning is like a meaning, right? There is like, a, which is perhaps, I don't know if RCS supports it uh, natively, but I guess you can implement it as simply as, R, uh, as uh, sorry, R, I say RSS, uh, RSS or Atom plus uh, metadata mm -hmm. in the items. So, yes. Um, I actually have to go in seven minutes because um, someone, uh, I dropped what I call a ninja meeting. So I need to <laughs> have a, a working meeting after this. Okay. But uh, thank you so much. That's all right. Uh, we can wrap at the top of the hour. That the uh, that'll be all right. And about the least common denominator, uh, just to close uh, yeah. on that. I love that. Uh, yes, completely. It's like there is pot uh, it's, the, it's seen as a problem, often, but I think it has potential. Sort of like the commons, mm -hmm. because the commons is like has this press. You know, I, I mean, this is a, I guess just a, a fuzzy link, but it's like has this press as like oh the tragedy of the commons. But what right. about like the everything that is not a tragedy in the commons? Right. So this common denominator scenario has a lot going for it I mean, when it comes to resiliency. And yeah, I just completely agree. Uh, and for me, it's like this is why starting with plain text, essentially, is, is crucial. Have you seen Cory Doctorow's takedown of the tragedy of the commons? No, I have not. Of course, Cory Doctorow has a brilliant thread or essay on just about everything. Um, <laughs> the question is, uh, I, my question is, which year are you talking about? <laughs> Which I mean, year? He's done a couple, I think, over. over yeah, exa exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, it seems like there's probably one that goes back to like 2003, maybe. You know, yeah. How, how, do you do you know Corey? Yes. Like yes, you, you met him. Yes. Oh, nice. I I only directed it via Twitter and so on, but he's so nice, right? He's a lovely guy. I have yes. no understanding how he does as much as he does, and Amazing. and he shares his his mo pretty uh -huh. openly. He ta he tells people what he does. I know him. Yeah, and how he does it. I mean, I, a, a lot of what he's doing is he spends time a couple of hours every day consuming a half a dozen things, writing notes about them and saving them in a spot that he can then reuse them later on. So he, yep. a, a great deal of, of it is, and right. having watched him do it for a while, he, his system is more, uh, in, in, a lot of it he keeps in WordPress. He ha essentially has a commonplace book in WordPress that he can delve into and pull out details of things he's written ages before. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. And, yeah, I, I'm. I'm so happy you say I didn't know that. And, and that, that, of course, I saw the WordPress and so on. But like, uh, that's inspiring. Yes, he he has two things which I, I don't know if you know, which I, are, are huge influential for me. Which are like is uh, adversarial inter interoperability mm -hmm. and the repository of missing devices. You have seen that one for EFF repository or no catalog catalog of missing devices. He wrote. He wrote about this uh, non-existing catalog. Well, actually, it exists because he wrote it. Uh, or with uh, with missing devices that we should have, and uh, yes, and that's essentially the hour in my in my yeah you know, in my uh, really? world view. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. But, <laughs> but of course, a lot of things are the hour in my uh, warp mind. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, uh, yes, yeah, awesome devices. I didn't know about that one. That's great. Yeah, catalog of missing devices. Uh, it's in the well, you know I where found it is. Yeah, yeah, so nice. Um, awesome. Yeah, so I have to go for the next one. 
Yes, missing devices for EFF. Um, and like I thought it's inspiring. It's inspiring. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, let's get everybody over to the Mattermost and see if that'll yes. work as a conversation platform. Uh, yeah. Let's move the call one hour later on Thursdays to yeah, 11 a.m. Pacific. That should work. And see you all next week. Yes, I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you for Good. this. Sweet. Yes. Have a nice day. Have Have a nice day. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. See you, Chris. Thank you. Take care. Let me close out of it.